I think it's that time. But what I found out is that I have a lot of characteristics of a narcissistic person that in definition, they cannot exist if you care, which is a needed mindset to be a narcissist. If you still have empathy and you still care, it is not indicative of a narcissistic person to have either one of those. And the premise of them existing at the same time on the same plane is um, whimsical. Because in essence, they can, but they usually don't. So it's like asking somebody, can they be honest if they're a liar they you can do one or the other but it's hard to do both i don't know but the knowing there are no boundaries on facets and the different types of personalities that people are inventing or displaying every day for any reason means that there is too many of them to try to diagnose or understand especially before you do that to yourself first. That's why the statement of using I statements and is very important because if you do that, a lot of times you'll answer your own question. And when you look inward, you tend to have a sense of responsibility not to hurt yourself with your thoughts or your views. So if you start there with inward, if you do it, approach it on an outward level to anybody, you will have an example of what to do not to hurt somebody and be able to draw a line in a healthy way. Without that, it's going to come off as hypocritic when you are speaking about something that implies a certain amount of empathy but you're doing it from a narcissistic point of view. That's the part that is, makes your point or whatever you're speaking about not valid when in fact you don't really care enough to be making a point. So my premise is if you don't care and you have no point to make and what I need to start doing is stop acting like I care about things or coming off like I care when I don't need to. And I cannot feel guilty about not caring because I don't have to care about anything that I don't want to. That's my right. And that's my opinion. So the next time somebody tells you that you're a bad person because you don't care about what they care about, you have to remind them that nobody can even have feelings about that because that's a me thing. And if you want to include people in the me thing, you have to run that risk. So. The only thing you can do is run the risk and not care, or you can care and not run the risk. They're not the same thing. And that's, it's just about that. So that's why, like, when my dad tells me stuff, like, it comes back from your parents being raising. Like, I, I remember him saying stuff like, if you ask seven questions, you'll get the answer. If you ask yourself seven questions, back to back you should get an answer well I I asked myself seven questions and I got more confused and you have to really realize that some things don't have to have a definite answer for them to be right and so that's the only time an opinion can be placed as a fact because it's yours when you display it to anybody else it is subjected to their opinion and then there is no wrong but if it's just you to judge your own opinion, we tend to regard that as fact when we're doing it to ourselves because we, most of us trust ourselves. So if you don't respect that in other people, it means you, it's indicative that you don't respect your own self and it's to trust yourself to have a factual opinion, which is the same thing as not it's the same thing we were just saying from the beginning. So yes, they can exist on the same plane, but it's not likely 
So it's fair for you to assume that the lack of one is the presence of the other one. And it's like saying, uh, when you find a rapper under a fat bitch's bed, it's safe to assume that she ate that. You don't know. You can't say it's fact. It could have been in, like anything. But the fact that you are adding up factors to get to the facts is not saying that you know the facts. You are doing math and equations to get there. And sometimes we, me, everybody mistakes the journey to finding truth as a definite thing. You can change your mind in the middle of your journey of finding truth. If your intentions are pure, nobody gets hurt. And you can do that respectfully and you can do that inwardly too. When you don't, I found for me, when I don't do it inwardly, I tend to lack empathy for people's process to that because it is assumed that that's a private thing in my opinion. So I think that that's the thing that makes me narcissistic in that manner because I don't really care what anybody thinks about the process, but I should if I'm talking to them. But it's sometimes I I don't know how to say it, but, I, but I'll be talking and it's not to anybody. And I don't want to change that because it's, that's, how I, that's how I sort my thoughts. But I guess the question is, How can you speak to nobody when in essence, I'm not a nobody, but I'm me. So I guess I'm saying, how do you speak to yourself when you can just, no, what am I saying? Mm. If you speak to yourself, are you personifying yourself as two entities or are you accepting your duality as a singular person. See, one of those is narcissistic and the other one isn't. The first one I mentioned, you can't do that if you're by yourself. Narcissism cannot exist without the presence of the opinion or the manipulation of others. If you're by yourself and your opinion only affects you and nobody else knows it, then I guess, can you be narcissistic if you only care about yourself and you have empathy? Can you have empathy and be narcissistic at the same time? Depends on what you're talking about. And I guess the answer is yes to that. Because I've experienced with myself that I have a tendency to really not care about some things and then care about something else. And I think these these textbooks have it mixed up. They they paint narcissism as a, a purposeful thing or something that means you lack one thing, but you, they don't touch on the fact of you can be narcissistic on a certain plane and empathetic on a different one. And it doesn't mean that one is the absence of another one. What it means is that we have developed facets within ourselves that allow us to be emotionally hypocritical and that's what I try not to be but I can't help it if I don't care about something that I'm talking about which means I need to only speak about things I care about which means that most of the things I care about I don't feel that there's a need to talk to anybody about it so that means I should be shutting up from the get-go if I decide to open my mouth then I'm inviting others to have an opinion about what I care about and sometimes that's personal and Shutting the fuck up can solve all of that. Just something I just learned just now in these past 15 minutes of digging deep into myself. And I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. And it really don't even matter that I'm in a room by myself. But I'm talking to you, anybody that's, that's watching this. Please absorb this and just just pick apart something that may be for you. Because I'm experiencing things that I don't want to be for no reason. So if you could use something from that, please take it. If not... Don't make no comments because it's not for you. And if it is, I appreciate 
the thought of me finding out on a different plane. I don't even need no comments from you neither. And that's not narcissistic. That's called self-care and being private and the right to exercise privacy, free of opinion when you're speaking of emotions. That's why I don't like to do that because it defeats the purpose of speaking. If you're going to speak, then you're inviting other people to have an opinion about your emotions. And if they're doing the same thing that you're doing, exercising that right, then you have to be accepting of whatever their feelings are. And if you don't, give them a chance to say that. And when they gave you the chance, then somewhere along the lines is not narcissism, that's manipulation. And one is wrong and one is unintentional. And so knowing that, I found that I can have those characteristics and I know that I have empathy, but it's conditional and I'm human and I can admit that and I'm still a man. And this is a journey. Because even just now, right in front of your motherfucking eyes, I just became a better person and you don't even have to care or, but if you realize and believe what I just did and you hear what I just said, then you too can find parts of that process and apply it to yourself because it's really not an easy thing to do. And after you're done, you will reap the benefits of understanding yourself in multiple ways and not thinking and thinking that we have a definite understanding of ourselves would mean that we are done growing. And if I think that I'm still growing, then I have to know that there is no definite understanding of myself and nor do I have to feel bad of lacking care of the understanding of others. It's kind of like you can not respect somebody, but you don't, that's not disrespectful. With the absence of one doesn't mean the other one's present. So I used to say, if you don't respect me, that's disrespectful. And that is narcissistic. Expecting people to respect me that don't care. Or if they do care, you still can't expect that. And I used to do that. And so now, knowing that it made me do the opposite, which is what we do. Sometimes we counteract. And now I have this thing where I really don't care. And I don't care about what it looks like or what it sounds like for me choosing what I can, like care about. And that's, that's a choice. It's for my own health, for my own protection. And everybody has that. And you should make them. And it starts with drawing lines and boundaries. And that means hard lines and hard boundaries will yield less encroachment. And that's, that's for you. But for some reason, the boundaries we draw for ourselves also apply to other people and what they can do to you as well. So if you start with self, draw some boundaries and draw some s standards for yourself, you will have less people encroaching on them. And then now nobody's even checking with you if you care because you don't have to. But when you start encroaching on other people's boundaries, they have to either A, say that you're being manipulative or you care and you're trying to force it, which it's like trying to force a birthday gift. You can't force a gift. If you force it, then it's not, it's not, there's no accepting part of it. And the definition of a gift is a giving and an accepting. You can't give somebody something they don't want. And I, I that's the one thing that I wish I could do, but I'm not our creator and I'm not emotionally invested enough to go through the process. It is what it is. And just like I can do that, I expect everyone else to, and I think it's healthy. And so if you ever run across me in a conversation, please, please, please do not think I'm being unempathetic or narcissistic when I tell or speak like I don't care because I do care. It's just not going to be obvious when I have a point to prove. My care and my point are two different things. And if you can't remove the feeling of care or needing to feel that before you hear my point and I don't know what I was talking for from the get go and I have some work to do with myself about why I have a need to be understood. It's a lot of work. Um, I don't really have enough energy to continue on that if, I, if I'm to be fair with myself and not knowing why I do that is, is a struggle and I have to even realize it with myself. 
I don't have to know everything about myself to con to say it's not working for me and to fix it. So when they say that thing, you can't fix something or you shouldn't fix something that's not broke, yeah, you can. Because it's just not working. It may work fine in its mechanics, but it's not working for you. And you have a personal moral obligation to fix anything that doesn't work for you or you're accepting less than what is good enough for you. And I don't know. If I could afford a Mercedes, why would I drive a Taurus? I mean, they, they got to be a reason at least. And if the reason doesn't enhance you as a person, then you are doing yourself a disservice. And that's why, that's what makes you being able to have your opinion sp spoken to from self worth in a self worth manner, looking at your opinion as facts because you technically you only have one, one person to check with, and that's yourself. Otherwise, you were involved in other people and outside manipulation and all those things will change the truth sometimes. And to avoid that, you should ask yourself first and then you should believe yourself. And you should also like um, arm yourself with enough knowledge to know when you are tripping. And the part that makes me narcissistic is that you can't tell me I'm tripping if you can't prove that tripping is a, a factual state of mind. Tripping could be the absence of state of mind or the absence of care. And you're tripping, but you're not doing anything. So that's when I feel I'm turning to be crazy because I'm, I'm taking an action and I'm treating it as a now. Like it's not an action, but when you're tripping, something's happening, even if it's quiet and it doesn't look like anything and all actions does all actions don't require movement, but there is a movement. It's just you can't see it like the wind. Sometimes you can feel it, but you don't hardly ever see the wind unless it has debris in it to track the movement. And if you can't track something's movement, you cannot deny or approve its existence, which is why people don't believe in things they can't see sometimes but on a scientific level, get it, got it good. But how does that explain the things that factually can't be seen, but is movement can be measured? That's weird. And that's why I was, I feel like it's a, it's a certain plane that you can be on when you can feel the movement of something you can't see. And if anybody's ever felt that, then you can approve or deny that. But I think that everybody has felt the movement of something that they can't see. And that is the basis and the premise of why I believe in God or whatever higher being you want to call him. But at the end of the day, I also believe I was made in his self image and he didn't make me just like him. He made me in his image. So I am not expected to live my life without flaw and knowing that it kind of makes me okay with it all of my flaws and i don't feel bad because i don't need anybody to approve or disapprove about my flaws if they if you don't like them they don't have to affect you if they affect you that's kind of your fault you could politely remove yourself from caring or thinking about something that's distasteful for you you don't have to experience that. You can choose not to care for your own emotional safety. And that is not disrespectful. So if you have a point and you think it's valid and you want to continue, then you have the right to run over anything in front of you. And But you don't have the right to do the one and not expect it being looked at as an open field to be done back to you. It's like, when you, you know, it's like when a nigga eats some pussy and he, he expects that same pussy to now then suck his dick because it's it's unspoken. It goes back to primal state. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And if you have to be told to scratch my back now, I'm asking when you didn't. And that's the implied that there is a level to us that's not equal. If you have to ask me to scratch your back and I scratch yours without you asking, it's already a disadvantage. So... Knowing that and all the colors of people is too hard to tell. So even though it's narcissistic, I expect and I respect somebody to have a standard of 
if you're not scratching my back and I'm not scratching yours, and I'm sorry if that means you have to go first, but that's how I'm set up and I'm not going to accept anything less, we can just not embark. Otherwise, I'm setting myself up to be disappointed too many times and it's either keep doing that or not care. And though they want to say I'm narcissistic, if that was true, I wouldn't care. So, yeah, so to avoid all that, I'm just going to actually not care and not care about the narcissistic part either. It's a, it's a cloud of acceptance that happens. And I just sat here for like maybe about an hour and a half digging inside my own thoughts of my own feelings and trying to get Wikipedia and Google's opinion about what different states of narcissism are and can they exist with the different states of empathy. And I found out that they can. And that's the beauty that God gave us, I guess you could say, or your higher power. And that you can be a good guy and still be evil at the same time or simultaneously. And there's nobody's place to judge your intentions unless you reveal them. And you can't reveal them if you didn't have the chance to. So the fact that somebody doesn't even have all the information about your intentions means that nobody has the right to say anything and you shouldn't be telling nobody anything unless you want them to have the right to have an opinion about it. And we all should look on a simple playing field that an opinion is non-factual by definition, so it doesn't need to be negated or debated. It's an explanation, it's an acceptance, it's a hearing, and you can move on with your life. You don't have to expect or think you are obligated to make a point or engage in a conversation, debate, argument about somebody's opinion. It's stupid. Might as well argue with a wall or a tree, an inanimate object that doesn't have an opinion and you're trying to negotiate the existence of it. So, just on a basic level, I mean, I can care and I can exercise empathy and it's conditional and that's humanity. I can care about what I want to care about or parts of things. People don't think like that on that level that you can have segments to your empathy and segments to your narcissism and they move around like fluid pieces around us and they're part of our energy that is sensible and detectable from people that are sensitive in that way. And I had to learn that just because I'm sensing things doesn't mean I have a right to exercise vocally my opinion about it. What I chose to do is still get my point across is I vocally exercise my opinion about the right to do that, but I'm actively saying it's not for you, not for anybody else, like this video per se. Okay, it's, it's kind of like that. If you see it, you see it. That's fine. If you don't, it's not for you anyway. And I don't feel bad. I don't want to try and do something good. And if you expect me to feel bad about something I have good intentions for, I, it just makes me feel like I, I was justified in saying from the get go, I don't care enough to embark. And but it feels bad. But I keep getting negative things from he acting like. I care when I'm just being fair. And the process is just as important as the outcome, i.e. the crop and the harvest. There is no which one is important. They're both equally important, but one does come before the other. And you cannot have a harvest without planting seeds. You can't. And so seed planted and patiently waiting for my own harvest and even putting fertilizer in, doubling up on my water and my care of my harvest before it's fair makes me feel safe that it's going to actually be a harvest I'm, because I make a lot of mistakes and if I am to think that I'm mistake free in a world that is built on mistakes then I'm saying that I'm better than anybody or anything and you can't and we all make mistakes they're just different and if you don't take the time to listen to the differences 
but first you have to care to even do that so it's a two-part thing and if you don't care then that's why you shouldn't be listening and if you do care you should be accepting of whatever the answer is it doesn't matter it's built on a premise of opinion and feelings and those things are in my opinion non-debatable which is why i don't think we should talk about we should add that to the, the saying about when people don't talk about politics or or religion you should also add feelings to that too if we are not engaged in on that plane so I'm talking about feelings to family members and people that you're actively fucking and you plan on being in your life. Other than that, if, if I have no plan or no expectation for that, then that means I shouldn't even be embarking on something that has no guarantee that needs a guarantee. And I don't know about you and your feelings, but my feelings have to be guaranteed before I extend them. And if that means that that is a transactional thing, I would rather that than the adverse of dealing with my feelings in an open way and not expecting nothing. If that's what I'm well, if that's what I'm supposed to do, then I'm just not gonna do it. And it's okay. And they and from what I found out is that that's what makes me look and appear and even feel narcissistic sometimes because if I don't care, I just don't I can't force that or I don't want to anymore. After a certain age, I stopped sucking dicks I didn't want to suck, and I also stopped caring about stuff I don't really care about, and I feel okay and feel a sense of freedom with that, and I, it took me a long time to get there, and I'm, I'm proud of the mistakes I made that led me to the truth about myself, and feeling that needs no, I don't need no validation. I.e., I don't care if you don't care, but what I do care about it is you respecting the unanimous treatment of the revelation of care. So, while I'm telling you, while I'm listening to you, like in that plane, it is assumed that it's a safe place. And if I can't guarantee that, or if it doesn't feel that way to me, then something is not right and even if it's all right that's my feeling i can i can feel that and message for everybody to shoot it can feel everybody don't don't let society people places and things affect your natural feelings about stuff because sometimes those feelings may be for a reason even if you can't explain them or, or point them out you're starting from the wrong place because you shouldn't even feel an obligation to do so but if you do you have to expect and accept when people don't care the way you want them to it's no tea it's no disrespect no but people have so many facets and that's why i demand and draw hard lines when it comes to dealing with me i'm not trying to tell anybody how to be or what they should include into themselves but when you're dealing with me i'm going to have to accept or deny and it's safer for everybody else to just respect the lines instead of telling me how harsh I should react to the encroachment of it because I don't know about you but in Texas where I'm not from I've learned that people will shoot you because they don't even know who you are on on their property and instead of asking that is their choice to ask who that before they shoot but it is your right to bear arms and it is your right to protect your household i.e your mental state and your emotional state like you would with that gun and so that means there has to be a line and when encroached for your own mental and emotional safety you have to draw lines or everybody's welcome to step on it and i don't know about you but my lines are always that visible until you step on them so you can look at it like a a mortar you can walk across if you if you like at your own risk and if i care i'm going to tell you where the line is and if i don't care i'm going to let you step on it and i'm going to treat you like you did it on purpose and that's my choice because i don't like repeats and i don't like explaining myself that much but i do want to be understood so it's a, it's a fine line and i'm learning the value of shutting the fuck up and enforcing my hard lines to a fault with everybody unanimously without feeling a grandiose need to 
be understood anymore. And it just happened today, just now, right in front of your face or behind your back. And in essence, this whole message is for me, even when I'm talking to you. So feel free to ignore me. Feel free to judge me, but know that you it's in your best interest to just do it quietly and fairly so we don't have to have no issues because I'm not doing that for you. I, I don't care enough about whoever, what you're feeling because in essence, you're not here. I'm here by myself. I'm sitting in the room. So I have an obligation to care about things that aren't here and perceived emotions and thoughts. You can consider those things that are not present and not here. And I, I think that's the definition of crazy is caring or adjusting based on things that are not definite or not here. No adjustment. Draw your lines and that's the truth and whatever you feel. As long as you put God first and your intentions are not um, nefarious, you don't even have to explain them because God knows your heart and at the end of the day, all truth will be revealed about anything that you seek. So all you got to do is wait. You can't force it on anybody, but you can force it on yourself. And we all as human beings have a tendency to try to correct or enforce um, mindsets or thoughts on other people before doing it to ourselves. That's why a lot of us are actively being hypocritical and it's the acceptance of it that I don't understand. Because I've seen myself be hypocritical and I, I don't accept it. Matter of fact, I almost don't even want to do that in front of nobody. I'd rather do it and find out and fix it. But the whole idea that hypocrisy is okay with anybody, that is what makes you less than. Because you can't stand on a box that you haven't put there. And if you do, you should expect to fall through. Because you don't know. And I, I expect the worst. And... If I had an example of the best happening more than the worst, then I could speak from that place. But in my experience, the worst is around the corner and the best is is next week. So, whether this message reaches you right now or if this message reaches you next week, I promise you one thing about my authenticism, that it will remain the same. And if it changes, it's not because of what you think. Or what you feel and I, and I exercise and I celebrate that right and I will guard it with my life and this must have been brought to you by the boom network and Versace still sponsored me for some reason and not you and that's okay somebody will sponsor your your movements and if they don't you can do it yourself I just happen to have Versace on my back and to sponsor me and my my journey doesn't mean I'm special or better than I just have something respectable to point at for myself to feel solace in my journey. Kind of like Beyonce told me I was cute, bitch. Can't nobody tell me that I'm not after the queen has told me that's the stamp of approval. And I didn't need it. But I still carry it, and I'm so thankful. So, Beyonce knows I really appreciate working with you and a chance to see that you can be a great and an important being in existence and still remain humble and make mistakes in a human way. Like when I saw you eat those Cheetos and you did, your, you did the crumbs like this or something, and I noticed they fell a little bit on your pants and you just brushed and you kept it moving. I don't know how much those pants cost you, but the way you went about brushing those crumbs off them pants, as good as they looked on you, it's almost as if the price of them didn't matter in how you treat it. You have a standard, how you treat crumbs on your pants, and you exercise it. And I dare be a bitch to say, girl, those pants are, are those seven jeans? Yeah, you can't be dropping crumbs on them. If you want to buy them to drop crumbs on them, that's your prerogative. And just because you're great doesn't mean that you are without the appearance of flaws. And if the only people that point them out is other people, then they are not flaws. Those are attributes. And those things can be considered 
necessities from the inward side of us to be who we are. So when I feel like, bitch, I've got a line, and if you encroach on it, I'm going to whoop your motherfucking ass. That's that's for me to feel what my reason is, and, and you only have to worry about that if you cross it. Otherwise, I don't know why we're even in this space where I have to be understood and you don't have to listen. I don't, I don't want to talk no more, but I will be respected by myself first. And I know, I feel like it's infectious. I.e., if you respect yourself enough, people don't have a choice but to do the same thing because disrespect is ignored and not even, you can't disrespect me if I don't care about your opinion. So when you take that away, you don't feel disrespected except from yourself. And which is still a hard thing to be done or realize that you're disrespecting yourself and it's easier to point out somebody else as the in fault of that. But if you start with the I statement, I promise you, you will find most times the fault starts with you or you can affect it so that it doesn't matter who the fault is that you can change it by starting with you. And if you want to change it, that's one thing. Start with you. If you start with another person and you, to me, you're saying, I don't want to change it, but I want to hide the reason why it's existing. And you can close your eyes all you want to. If a hurricane is coming, it's there. No matter how you perceive it, no matter how you look at it, a hurricane is a hurricane. You can't blink and it go away. So it's better just to prepare. And the only thing that can happen is you over prepare for something that could have came or you can under prepare for something that could have came, which one has a bad outcome. And the only person that's gonna to have to deal with that outcome is you, so you should probably stop explaining your moves and make sure that they're the right ones. And I'm saying that in a self kind of way because I keep expecting my moves to have the importance for right now. And a lot of things that I'm doing, I don't even understand, but that's just right now. And even in the future, when I look back, I want to give myself a, a, a good basis to my future and my perceived morals because they change like the wind and if you fortify them every day and soon enough then you are accelerating the probability of your future morals to be in, in accordance and in line with something that you have always felt and there ain't nothing like the the, um, the the stamp of approval within self of longevity feeling a certain kind of way or having a certain standard or drawing a line if you've been doing it for 20 years then that's kind of embedded and no matter what any other things it feels you have been dealing with that for 20 years and right or wrong or indifferent who else like who else should care i don't know but i know i don't and so i don't expect you to either but You can exercise care and you can also exercise respect and they're different things. And so people have this thing thinking that because somebody cares, they have to respect you. And respect is earned, not given. And sometimes people that we care about haven't earned our respect, but they're just assumed from the narcissistic behaviors that we all have. That we assume that people feel how we feel about ourselves. And, Sometimes we don't even know what to feel about ourselves when we get that information from other people. That's what I feel sad about. That's why I draw my lines and I'm not going to let anybody encroach or affect what I feel about myself. And if you are intentionally or unintentionally, I will deal with them the same just so I cover all my bases. Because people change. You never know. We could start out not intentionally trying to do something and then they can manipulate the outcome of it for a number of reasons and who got time to be guessing all those different factors and variables and i can just be unanimous on how i treat everything and stop acting like i care about stuff i don't care about and if i get that feeling i need to stop overthinking myself because if i'm right or wrong i just the right to shut the fuck up and keep it to myself is like something i need to exercise and i don't know why i have an obligation to 
make my plan be heard even when it's clear that it's not available, not possible. So I'm that guy that will argue with a tree. <laughs> Basically, and I do it. And, and, it's, and it's, it's only embarrassing when other people hear me do it. But I feel on some level that tree has some, some understanding or I wouldn't be talking to it. And if I look crazy to, to you, America, because I, cause I talk to trees and I make points and we have valid discussions and we're growing from each other and it's a tree and you don't see him talking to me doesn't mean you, you can't tell me that tree ain't talking to me. You don't know the language. You you, can, you actually can mind your business if I'm talking to a tree and, it's, and you ain't got a feeling about it. You don't. And I've, I've just not learned that. And I don't have the right to have an opinion outwardly about things I don't care about because it is uh, I mean, it is assumed that you are speaking about things that you care about when you exercise your right to have it outwardly. If you don't care, then shut the fuck up. And I and I I, I swear to God, I've just learned that that. The value in it. I, I knew the term or, or the process, but I did not know the value in that because you can always go back and then state your position, but you can't wholeheartedly retract that without looking like a hypocrite. And I, and I was looking hypocritical, which is probably why some people I wanted to have faith in me and what I say did because their own insecurities or, or my approach block the, the understanding and the respect of the right to do so. And I can't blame them when I gave you the tools to do that and I set myself up because I'm just too, I'm just too in depth about things I don't care about when I can just shut the fuck up and I, and I don't know why I didn't do that with a lot of stuff. It'll save time, save confusion, save a thing. And I, also will be drawing a hard line with myself not expecting from others and i don't think i'm better than nobody but you will treat me as i see myself if you're going to treat me anyway and i don't mean you have to but if you choose to there's a standard to that too that's why i don't let anybody buy me gifts i don't let anybody come to my birthday party because this is a personal thing and there's a standard that's implied that you may not have been or may not have, have had the privilege to be privy to. Because even my needless information, if it's about me, is important. And I think I had some kind of um, self or I was seeking approval about something that I didn't want approval for or it looked like that. I, I was always confused, but I guess when people looked at it from the outside, I wouldn't be doing all that talking and explaining if I don't care. It gives a false implication of the presence of passion or or motive when you're speaking like that, when it's just a unanimous thing, and that's how I speak about those topics. But I don't want you to think I care more than I do about something because I have the ability to be multifaceted enough to care about something I don't care about, or at least I have the mental nimbleness to speak about it from both sides without stating my actual stance. And that's the thing that makes us geniuses or sheep. And a way to point it out, sometimes sheep, you learn all kind of clicks. If you feel threatened or scared from the presence of a wolf, knowing they exist, it is not that wolf's fault or obligation to do something different because you are sheep. That's a you thing. And we have to stop making you things a me thing or other people thing. I mean, it happens on accident sometimes. You expect somebody to care about what you care about, but you can't force it or be mad. So, and the fact that you are a sheep, you got to know there's some wolves out there. You just better stay your ass in that safety of the gate if you don't like the chance that you'll be eaten by a wolf because people are hungry in ways that they don't let you know. That's why they say wolf and sheep clothing. So you can stay out the forest and think you have from the wolf. But what if one of them is already in there with you? 
And because you feel safe, you let your guard down and now a wolf eating that ass up and you thought you did everything you could to protect yourself. And that's what make us, should make most of us feel small when we try and protect ourselves in ways that can't be protected again. Instead of just embracing the experience and the knowledge and celebrating the right to do it again and celebrating the fact that we had some assistance in surviving it because we didn't do this by ourselves. And that's why I believe in God. He gave me so much assistance and so many times he helped me and I don't know why. And I don't care why. I'm just glad he did it. So. Dad even told me he had the same experience that when he comes to you, when you need him, and when you ask, and he does it in an indefinite way. I'm a factual person and I'm very sign. I'm very, I'm very pessimistic and skeptical at times, but that was an undeniable fact and a revelation of his existence. And so from that day forward, that man is in my heart and I am indebted to him. And I'm also in love with him and I also can't wait I could just show my appreciation for that because in that moment, that's all I had. You can't appreciate something fully until it's either taken away or that's all you have. And I was blessed enough to experience that. It was a very low point, but I definitely got what I needed to get from it. Now all I gotta do is exile the need to be understood. And I think like the term, because that is creating space for nefarious people to exercise their strength without regard. And if I'm gonna be passionate about my journey, then I have to guard the, the existence and the facts about it with my life. So, from this day forward, I just need to shut up more because I'm willing to die for mine. And I mean, like, subconsciously, like, um, there's nothing anybody could do. I, I just don't want, I just don't want to do that. I'm really not. It's easier just to just keep it surfacey and you can stop acting like that. And I can stop expecting that, and everybody wins. And I'm good with you not caring. I'm good with everybody not actually caring. The only time it's a problem is when I need your care to get an outcome. Something. If your care is not important for any outcome for me, I don't even feel the need to, to tell you I don't care. You can find out. Matter of fact, with me, you will you will know if I care or not. Because one is existing and the other one is there on the way out. I don't stand in places I don't like and I don't be, I don't speak when I don't care. Even, even if I shouldn't care. The fact that I'm going to demand it to be regarded with some type of um, equity and not the kind of equity that is in houses and that you build equity, meaning the tools and the things that we use to feel equal in any situation. Like standing on a box to make yourself six foot, that was a tool you use to raise your height to be equitable in a six foot situation. And just because I wasn't born six feet tall does not mean that I can't somehow, some way, intuitively and ingenuitively make myself six foot when I say so without giving a reason. I, don't, I just thought everybody could do that, but some of us walk around here without the, the knowledge of the power or don't know how to exercise the power to make yourself, respect yourself, and demand it from others. That's one way, or you can just shut the fuck up and keep on working because you're not done if you think you are. You're not perfect. And that means you're wasting time trying to be understood when you could be perfecting your, like your vessel and your motives. You start with God and point inwards, and that's a great foundation. 
And his message has been brought to you by the Boom Network. And that's how she's still always possible. And I think I look at it's actually like it's God. Metaphorically. Okay? Stay blessed and stay vigilant.